Go back to Biblio Fitness. Hope everyone's had a great day. Made some spectacular gains. Um, I know I was on a hiatus once again. I got this taken care of, the little shit on my face. Um, right now it has like cream on it. Um, I went to a doctor and stuff, but still waiting on a call um, from the referral office or whatever so I could set up an appointment with a dermatologist so this can actually, you know, like the root or whatever can actually be completely obliterated. So I don't have any more of these instances of it cropping up and all that. So um, also big development. Um, I've been studying for the ASVAB. Um, think I'm going to join the army. Not even think, I know I'm going to join the army. Um, I want to join the army, all the opportunities. And I feel like, you know, with everything that is, even with the political turmoil that's going on in this nation, there's still a lot of benefits to the army. Um, more opportunities and an opportunity to leave this fucking city, to leave Miami for good. Um, this will be a great launching pad and I don't want to be just infantry. I was thinking about doing just infantry because that's like sort of who I am really. Um, you know, down in the dirt and that's kind of what I want to go through. But um, I kind of do want to get that um, the human intelligence officer job. So no, sounds like a dope ass gig. So uh, I think I'm bright enough to get it done. Just got to study. Um, but getting that process done, apparently getting a social security card is a bigger pain in the ass than I thought, especially for for me, apparently. so. But that's life. Um, it's going to be resolved one way or the other. And the Army recruiter is actually pretty helpful. She literally told me, hey, look, we can pass by the social security by her by her recruiting office and we'll get that done. And I'm like, all right, we'll probably gonna need to do that because I was on hold yesterday for like an hour and a half and then it was past seven o'clock and I'm like, okay, I'm pretty sure I'm on hold here and there's no one answering the phones anymore. So it's a giant pain in my ass. I don't know what's going on. But aside from that, uh, getting that out of the way, of course, it's all about this. Um, the most radical book I've ever fucking read in my life. Um, <laughs> Um, now I can see why Semi Agog had to make a video about him. And the more that I get into right now, I'm in onus. So I'm, I'm getting getting in there. Um, I'm on the second book. Um, <laughs> so crazy, bro. Now I'm going, I'm, now I'm starting to understand why, um, like the, the guy Semi Agog, y'all should check him out on YouTube. He has, um, I think he also has some other channel, I mean, other websites, I mean, other platforms or whatever, but. Um, he's the one that brought that up and he was making the case that someone like a Marx and someone like a Nietzsche were a reaction to what was said by Stern. Um, the more you read Stern, the more you begin to see how much influence this man's had on somebody like a Nietzsche. Um, there's not a lot of people during this time that were as realistic, you know, somebody that's calling religion out for what it is and socialism and liberalism and all these words, all these isms, um, all being put under the same fold. You know, how many people are going to be saying something like that, especially in the, in, in the 18th century, if, if, I mean, the 19th century, even though we still have that radical rise of humanism, but, you know, it's all under the same context, all under the same banner of eugenics. Um, now I'm really starting to understand, understand why somebody like a semi who is far more intelligent than I am, uh, you know, to be able to make that distinction and be like, you know what, that's really what it is all about. You know, why do we create these moral structures? Why do we create all these religions? Why do we create these values? But to create an appropriate, an appropriate human being, you know, you had Christianity, you had to follow these certain virtues, you had to follow these certain rules, you had to um, completely eradicate the, the, the world from your, from the, from its importance and putting the world of idea as the important thing. And there has to be a reason for that. There always is a self-interest, self-preservative measure that's being put in place, you know, even when you're supposedly fighting for the greater good, right? And even though when you're being a good Christian because God loves you and this is the way to be. The reason that people adopt these sort of religions is because they answer so many of those pertinent questions that they don't have a resolution for. You know, why am I here? What am I suffering for? Why am I put in this shitty situation? Why can't I get out? Why don't I have power? Why don't I have this? And all that sort of resentment can easily transpose onto a religion. 
and you know you can see why religion that like Christianity that 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 looked out more to the peasantry than to the aristocracy, why it would take off. Even though if it took off in cities, which should give you a little reason to doubt as to the the, the sincerity of the movement. Um, the vast majority of the early Christian thinkers uh, were were aristocrats who went to philosophy, went to the academies in Athens and such. Alexandria, um, you know, and, and I think the big, the first big city that Christianity ran through was Antioch. Uh, these big bastions of culture, of, of intermingling of, 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 of minds and such. Yeah, it makes sense why all this popped up. And, and, and he and recently has been talking about liberalism, I mean Sterner. Sterner has been making the whole thing about liberalism, how all of this is basically the same. How, you know, he always makes the, the little, the, 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 I guess a little saying always pops in. He's like, we got rid of the evil one, but the evil got left behind. The, oh no, we got rid of the evil one and the evil is left. And we're always obsessed with these ideas and these ideas transfigure onto other words, onto other meanings, but not even meanings, you know, it's just a different paper or a different label that we throw on it. But the evil remains the same. The evil remains there. And, and as time has progressed, we can see when reading the ego and its own, which we're not, where there is no ego anymore. There is no I anymore. There is no I. We're all just the fucking same people falling under the pressure of wanting to be like everybody else, but having the balls to say that we're unique. Um, that's just where we are now. You know, as, as time has continuously progressed, we separated more and more of ourselves from nature. You know, we are separating more from the very foundations, from the very things that brought us here in the first place. Um, violence and war and, and glory, all these things are, are for naught anymore. These things are not needed. Now we have a society completely effeminized because why do we need strong men? There are no more wars. We don't need wars. Wars are for barbarians, you know, to be violent is for barbarians. Um, you know, the more, docile you are, the closer you are to the ideal of today's society. And one only has to look at the, the, the values in place to see where we're going. And you always have to see that this is eugenics. Like, you know, even to be a liberal, even to be free, what is it to be free? There is no being free. You know, because even when we say, okay, but are we going to be completely free? Uh, free from moral scruples? free from 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 societal duties and things like that no 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 no. we can't have that we have to do this we have to have this like there's always the disagreement on what sort of freedom we have there is no such thing as absolutely free that's another idea that is possessed by us that we allow to cloud our judgments when we see that we're still attached you know freedom is relinquishing some things in favor of others um, one can say and and Sterner really makes that distinction right before I finish, and that's the distinction between freedom and ownness, something like he, it, it sounds a lot like stoicism. You know, he always comes back, harkens to examples of stoicism, and not always, but a few times he, he's done that, and it's like, and it reminds me, you know, it's like, I know I will never be truly free. I know that my body is not in truly free. And, and, he, and I love that case that he makes, it's like, you know, you not, you're not really free. You can be a slave and intrinsically in your mind, you can put yourself in a position or you could do some mental gymnastics that allow you to put up the airs that you are free. And, you know, an example could be Diogenes, right? Um, but you are not free. You can still be killed. You can't make every single choice that you can. You know you're not free. You know you're fettered. You know that somebody has the power of life and death over you. Um, you can't move about any way that you want, you know what I'm saying? Like, you're not truly free. The only way to be truly free, the only way to have true ownership in one's life is to have the might to be able to back it up. Um, and that's how it is now. You know, I mean, that, that's not how it is anymore. You know, that sort of thinking, that line of thinking is quite uh, radical. 
now even though it's taken on more of a more more wave um, or unless i'm just locked into my little box of conservative young men or whatever the case may be but it seems like that and even them are able to make that distinction because a lot of us still play to the same rules and we have to realize that these rules in place are to the benefit of somebody else or to the benefits of a cast of power a power cast or a set of individuals or what or whatever the case may be somebody is benefiting there is no such thing as a morality that can benefit all you know and that's one thing that sterner makes highlights so beautifully is like you know even this endeavor to be man which is another progression from Christianity was another progression from the from you know being one with God and now God coming on to you and finding the spirit behind everything and the values that you have to be with man but it's like how can I be this man this ideal of man because in order for me to be that I would have to shed all human limitations because all of us have different limitations I have different limitations things that I need to work on that's something that the person watching this video doesn't have to so how can I account for all that? I can't, you know, like we're all so fucking different. You know, even that endeavor itself is complete folly. And what is it to be man? You know, it's the opposite, you know, to be like the fucking douchebags from Wally. That's what we're gonna end up as. People think it's a joke, but look how pathetic, you know, we've got in that we can't even take the mic for ourselves for ownness. We have to allow the state to bestow upon these rights and we pout and we bitch and we moan and we cry until they give it to us. It's like if somebody can give you these rights, if somebody can give you these things, these privileges, and they can easily take it away. You know, you're not born with these innate rights, you know, it's just so frustrating seeing how DV, how, you know, we are trying so hard to deviate from our natures, from our nature in general, to the point of, of, of catastrophic consequences to the end of civilization, you know, this whole endeavor now of human, of human in the 21st century is a death cult, it's anti-human, it's anti-life, you know, it's running away from life. You know, look how delusional we've gotten where people can walk around and say they identify as something. You know, it's like, I don't know, you know, nature is wrong, nature is an error. The mind, this is all that matters, the spirit is all that matters. So if I believe something enough to be true, therefore it is true. This is just a natural consequence of what we've gone, been going through, you know, from the advent of Christianity, from the, and then you go to Protestantism, and then you go to the humanism, and then you go to liberalism. And it's all it just, it's all sounds the fucking same. It all is the same. You know, we got rid of the God, but man is still there. Now man is God. Man is the only triumphant God. And we have to get there no matter what. You know, we are byproducts of this enlightenment and the endeavor of, of the enlightenment. You know, giving the peasants to believe that they're equal to everybody else. You know, having us believe that we're all equal before God. We're all equal before the states. We're all equal before these things, you know, um, these institutions. There is no need of hierarchy. There is no need of favors from an aristocrat or, or, or a guild or, or, whatever, or a monarch. You know, everything is through the state. And he makes that case like during the French Revolution, it wasn't, it was a reformation just as the Protestant Reformation. There was no expulsion of God. Um, you know, he's like, he didn't try, they didn't try to get rid of all of the estates. They just wanted to get rid of, they just wanted to make sure only one estate remained. And if you could speak for the people, you can get away with anything. You know, what is it for this freedom? We have to sacrifice these certain things to make sure everyone else is free. You know, what is freedom of speech until you start saying some crazy shit and then you get censored? So there is no such thing as freedom of speech. You have to abide by these rules in order to be free. And that is a contradiction that we allow ourselves to be placed in all at all times, right? It's only by abiding the law can you be free. But then how can I be free if I have to abide by certain rules, by certain regulations that actually, if anything, hinder me, not allow me to progress? Um, Fucking hell, bro. This guy's this guy's crazy. Sterner is um and on another level, and the reason I I go back to the whole um um eugenics thing is because that's what it really is all about, is creating this sort of individual that is the most pliant to the powers in place. You know, what is the state but the upholding of those in power? You know, um, but you know, especially nowadays, don't you want to create a state where there is no threat? 
from the people in the bottom. I mean, look at us. Look at look at look at what our eugenic project is that we allow ourselves to be placed in. That you know, you look at culture, you look at the music, you look at the arts, you look at everything that we do, and it's just like that's why what we are, what we are. Um, people don't think that culture matters or the music that you listen to matters. You know, it's just music. Yeah, you know, like you fucking ignorant fool, but. You know, this is all a project. This is all a project to create the ideal human. And that's what it's always been. And I think that's what Sterner really brings to light. And that's something that Nietzsche had to react to was there is no religion and none of these things are true. It's all relative. This is all self-interest. We don't adopt anything unless it, it, it's interest for us. You know, people don't adopt Christianity because it's the truth of God. No, it's because it helps you. It satisfies you some things. You may not want to admit them. That's why we don't say, oh, no, 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 no. It's not self-interest because I don't consciously acknowledge it. But it's self-interest just the same. And you know, what human is being created here? You know, what are the values in being instilled and what is the byproduct? What is the product of these of these values? And that's something that Nietzsche started fucking around with. I was like, okay, none of these things are real. But what values and what lies can I place upon myself that help me progress, help me with the progression of life, it's saying affirming to life. Now, you know, and it really is all of a eugenics project, if you think about it, you know, from, from the very beginning, you know, look at us now, you know, to be a liberal is to be woke and to be inclusive and to not and to date trans people and not think that it's gay and you know and all these ridiculous things you know that's what it means to be a human being is yes, adopting these certain values that you know are to be absolutely ridiculous but most people adopt it anyways because it's just a natural proclivity of most people um, i'm gonna go ahead and continue um yeah, you guys, if you haven't read it, I just fucking suggest you do. Holy hell, bro. This is on some, this is some next level shit, man. Um, you know, and, and I didn't, I don't even know how the hell they came up with all this shit. <laughs> so, again, you know, Germans. What can you do? Yeah, it just shows you, like, there really are different levels of people. And I was watching, I was reading a biography about Mozart yesterday. And I was like, yeah, there really are different levels of human beings. You know, not all men are equal. That's bullshit. <laughs> um, you know, for an individual at five years old to start playing, to start orchestrating in front of a university at five years old. Fine. That's ridiculous. I know there's a case like when he was like seven years old, he never played the violin. He saw some people play, he picked it up and started playing it over and over. So I'm like, what the fuck? You know, it's just levels to this shit. And it just humbles you, you know, it's like, you know, and it's kind of a realistic kid in the crotch. It's like, you know, you have a ceiling. Not to believe this bullshit of humanity now, that, like, oh, the sky is the limit. No, I'm not saying to give up. I'm not saying to to place yourself in a box, but be, be very aware that, you know, what takes you five years to accomplish, it takes another five, five days. You know, there is a level of human, there's just different levels about us, you know, and there's just natural order of things. It's just how it is. Not to look upon it like people now, like we're all the same, it doesn't fucking matter. Um, history is being contorted and, you know, men are not needed and women are, could be just as physically capable as men. and. We have all these lies being thrown at our faces to become, I don't know what it is, some asexual zombie, I guess is the new ideal. Um, I don't know, or gender fluid or sexually fluid. I don't know, some weird shit. So I'll leave y'all with that. So I hope y'all make great gains today. Hope y'all have an amazing day. Um, I got back from my two week deload from the gym. Uh, feels good to be back. And tomorrow I'm gonna to start implementing Widowmakers into my into my routines, um, into my squats. So that should be a whole lot of fun. Um, well, aside from that, I love y'all. Have a great day. Peace.